quick disclaimer before we begin, the PEMF podcast does not contain any medical advice and the content provided is for informational purposes only. If you have any health concerns, please visit a healthcare professional. Welcome back to the PEMF podcast. And today we're going to be talking about PEMF and detoxification, which is probably a little bit of an overdue episode because it is one of the main benefits of PEMF therapy. Uh, we're going to go in over the benefits, how PEMF actually detoxes the cells and how to not over detoxify the cells. Um, so we're going with our first question. What actually is meant when we're saying PEMF detoxes the cells? Like what, what, what's actually going on? So as always with the PEMF podcast, we're not going to try and go too sciencey and go too in depth with this, but we're trying to break it down in simple terms as possibly can. And what we talk about when we're talking about detoxification and detoxing when relating that to PEMF therapy is all about creating the ultimate environment within that cell so that the cell can multiply and be healthy and it can detox the waste materials out of that cell. So say someone lays on a, a PMF mat then for 20 minutes and they get off, how has the PMF then detoxified their cells? How does this actually work? So we talk about the cells and the mitochondria around the cells. Um, and we also mention a lot in our PMF podcast about um, positively charged, negatively charged and, and creating the perfect kind of um, energy within that cell to give it a healthy cell. So there's, there's positive and negative ions within or surrounding the cell, inside the cell. And if you can balance those properly, and if the body can regulate those, then you're going to help with those cells to open up the cell membrane and the cell channels. And those cell channels are basically going to let nutrients in and waste materials out of those cells. And that is your kind of basic as we can get it de- um, kind of explanation of detoxification. Um, we did a really, really good podcast with Dr. Henning Sauper on, on cancer and um, PMF therapy. And he actually breaks this kind of the whole process with the cells down really, really well. So that's a great episode to listen to, um, to kind of help explain this. Yeah, no, definitely. And if anyone hasn't checked that out, I'll link it below this episode. Um, but what happens if the cell doesn't detox and it has too much waste material in and it can't get any nutrients in? What are, is there is there a bad side of that? Does something bad happen then? Yeah, so people that are living with super unhealthy attitude towards life and, and their cells aren't healthy either, um, it's known as cell death. So cell death is when a cell literally just dies um, or it can deform into other things. So, you know, that's where we talk about the realms of cancer and all that sort of thing. So it's super important to keep the cells healthy within your body. And yeah, no, definitely. And thinking of something like that has made me think of something that we might not have spoken about before. Uh, people who may be chronically ill um, with their blood as well, this is something that PMF has an effect on. What are kind of the before and after of a blood cell maybe before PMF and after PMF? Yeah, so this is something that's really, really interesting for me and something that I've always done when testing PMF devices. And because this is something that we can see within the body and we can actually physically see a change from someone that's using uh, a PMF device. So we we use something called a dark field microscope and people that are chronically ill, you can take a blood sample and you can look at their blood. And a lot of the time that blood is uh, what's known as like coagulated, where it's all stacked up in coils. Um, and we wanna change the blood viscosity of that. So we're bas- basically making the blood naturally thinner. Um, but what you can actually see under the microscope is that all these blood cells are stacked into coins and they're traveling around the body and they're reducing the amount of surface area on them cells to bring around oxygen and to work effectively. You can put someone on a PMF device, 10, 20 minutes later, you take another sample of their blood and you can see that those cells have started to separate and they're traveling around and it just looks a lot like a much healthier scene. Those blood cells can then carry a lot more oxygen. And as I say, it's something for me because PMF therapy, a lot of devices you can't feel, you can't touch, you can't smell, it's it's happening. Um, you can put a magnet on the device and you can feel that something's there, there's a magnetic field, but it's very hard to know instantly what's going on. Um, but that's something we can look at under a microscope and you can see an immediate change. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's something that Dr. Henning actually spoke about uh, in his podcast. As I say, it's below the episode if you want to go check it out. Um, we've covered way, one way PMF detoxes the body. Is there any other ways that it can do it? Or So yeah, we talked about how PMF therapy can help detox on its own. 
Um, but actually, we see a lot of people using PMA therapy to complement their type of detoxing method. So you can detox in many different ways. So we're not just saying that PEMF is the only way to detox. You can detox the body by taking a run, um, go, having a massage. Um, there's a technique that... so. Some people can get um, the a detox problem and they it can increase inflammation within the body. And one way to get rid of that and one technique people use is lymphatic drainage. Um, so that's a technique that may have been heard before. And we've actually had a lot of customers in the past that use PMF devices in complementary with lymphatic drainage. So the good thing about PMF device is that you can lay it down on a mat and you can either do massage over the top of that with somebody or you can do lymphatic draining te techniques. And the PMF is just going to accelerate those um, effects and it's going to complement those different types of therapies. And again, it's going to help treat the body whilst combining it with another type of therapy. Okay, great. So one thing that some people do actually get worried about before they use PMF, especially if they're planning on using a, a high intensity device, is actually over detoxing fire in the body. Um, how can you actually avoid doing this and or produce over detoxification? Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a good question because over detoxification is something where um, people, the, the body actually almost goes into shock and it's like detoxing everything. Um, and people can get like flu-like symptoms in these scenarios where they're actually in, in like a crisis state. Um, and this can happen with any type of therapy. So this can happen with someone that goes for like a three hour massage or something and they've never had massage before and their body just goes into absolute shock. Um, in the, you know, 10, 15 years I've been involved in PMF therapy, I've only ever heard of it once. And this scenario was actually a lady that um, went to a PMF convention. So there was multiple different devices that was all around one, uh, one event. And this lady went around and used every single one in the same day. She never used PMF before. Um, and she was using high intensity systems, low intensity systems. And she went home and had a detoxification effect where she just felt like she had a, a bad flu for like two, three days. Um, so for me, it's not really something to be worried about with PMF therapy. It's super, super rare. And as I say, it can happen with any type of therapy. Um, but we do encourage a low and slow approach with PMF. So like with anything, if you go and try, you know, like an ultra juice type diet and something, you just go heads first and, um, you know, you're juicing 24 hours a day and, you know, all these sorts of things. It, with with everything, there's, there's moderation, there's a way of building up to it. So we always say to people to do a low and slow approach. So the low and slow approach is, is as simple as it sounds, really. Some devices have programs which are like start out programs and they're set up as a lower intensity, um, but most devices have the ability to change the intensity on a system. So we would recommend starting at a lower intensity and working your way up to the full intensity of that system. And some manufacturers will actually give you like a therapy guide as like a two week plan or something. And that's like your protocol to get started on a low and slow approach. Yeah, no, definitely. I know the low and slow approach is something that I've heard about for for a long time now but um just to kind of close it out then is there any tips that you would say for anyone who is looking to detox with pmf uh, is there anything they should do as well as uh doing the pmf to kind of help yeah so you know it's really important and we mentioned this quite a lot to drink a lot of water um because when you detox the way in which those waste materials are expelled from the body is usually they come out during urine or, or through urine should i say um, so it's really, really important to stay hydrated when using PMF therapy. So drink before the system, uh, use the system and then make sure you're drinking throughout the day after that system. And that will help with the detox process. Okay, great. If you have any questions now about PMF in general or about PMF and detoxification, make sure to leave them below this podcast and we'll answer them in our next PMF talk episode, which is a little mini series we do where we answer your PMF related questions. Uh, and while you're there, make sure to leave us a follow or a subscribe on whatever platform you're on uh, and leave us a five-star review. It just helps us make bigger and better episodes every single week and helps us get bigger and better guests on. Thanks for listening to another episode of the PEMF podcast.